Welcome to episode one. I can't believe it. I, I hated that. Of <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Shave is delicious. What are you, a, a CBBC presenter? Yeah. Okay. Let's not talk about CBBC presenter. <laughs> Mr. Multiple glasses and like different colours and trainers and printed shirts. Harriet. Uh, I, I know you said that in like a derogatory way. Yeah, but you loved but I, it. I agreed with everything. everything. <laughs> not, anyway. not a lie told. Shame is delicious. This <laughs> is the Shame is Delicious podcast with me, Ishan Akbar, and him, Darren Harriet. And this is your new favorite podcast where we talk all things shame. We are two shame filled boys. I'm shameless. I'm shame filled. You're shame filled. I'm built on shame. Yeah, absolutely. And I, well, people say that I should have more shame, but I have absolutely none whatsoever. Yeah, I say that you should. Yeah, yeah, yeah all the time. Yeah, definitely. And that's why we thought, do you know what? Why don't we, two of the bestest friends mm, stretch. in comedy, get <laughs> together and do a novel thing, which is, I don't know if you've heard of it, a podcast? What? A podcast? What are those podcasts? I know. Are people still doing them? I don't know. It's, it's, it feels so retro. Um, so, Darren, do you know what? What would be really nice is let's, let's do a little profile of the other person. Okay, I'm cool. going to do your, your profile. Okay, you, you go first. You've got more accolades. Okay, you go first. Dar D Darren Harrier is an Edinburgh-nominated comedian who has, you would have seen on shows such as Live at the Apollo, Love Island After Sun, um, Comedians in a Farm, Shagging Sheep uh, on Channel 5. That's Stephen Bailey. Oh, is that Stephen Bailey? Stephen Bailey. What, did you not do that show? Stephen, no. What show did you do? Stephen Bailey a hosts The Farm on Channel 5, yeah. Did you do like a farming show? I don't, farming show? No. no. Have you not? No. Okay. Basically, any TV. The fuck? Whatever TV you've ever seen or dreamed of. He's done it. Yeah, whatever, whatever TV you've uh, sort of woken up with insomnia and you flipped over, that, uh, that's me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When, when the 10 minute preview's done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Flick you, over to Channel 5. You want to see a stand up show from eight years ago? Yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, I, I probably did it, guys. Um, uh, so Darren's been on that, but then Darren and I uh, befriended one another uh, when we went to New York. Well, before we went to New York. Yeah, before we went to New York. That would have been, that, that, that been quite a. <laughs> we just gone to New York. Quite a gamble. Yeah. Um, and when I first met Darren, I fucking hated the prick. <laughs> that's, that's, it sounds like you're not completely over it. I absolutely detested this man. Oh. I was very nice to no, you. No, you weren't. Yes, but I was. The first time we met, Piccadilly Comedy Club final. Yes. Uh, what was his name, the host again? Mike Monera. Mike Monera. He still owes me 150 quid. Of course he does. Of course he does. Piccadilly Comedy Club, uh, 26, 2014. Was it 2014? Yeah. Okay, yeah, might be. Yeah, because so I had just come to London then. No, sorry, 2016. I was going to say. Yeah, 2016. Yeah. So Darren was in the final with me. Oh, such a prestigious comedy event that was. It was. The Piccadilly Comedy Club. The top, the top floor burnt down. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it did. Yeah, it did <laughs> burn down. And he was there with his agent, Christian Knowles. Oh, freshly signed. Freshly signed. Oh, boy, still with him. And uh, oh. uh, guess, guess who won? Guess who won? Who, who won, Darren? I don't know, I can't remember. Yeah, who I, I think it might have been uh, Ishan Akbar, actually. Oh, uh, was it you? Yeah. And then Ishan Akbar won, and then Darren Harriet punched a table. No, I didn't punch a table! Yes, you did! No, I didn't you punch a table! You 100% punched a table. I think I just went like, oh. That's a punching a table. Yeah, well, you make it sound as if I was like, he, he, he did, Street he did Fighter 2 Ryu on a car, he, he, just like punching. He did this really dramatic manga punch of the table. <laughs> 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 and then I walked over. And then uh, his agent, Christian, was talking to me. And then Darren said, oh, he's going to sign you. And which he did two weeks later. Yeah. So he was right. Oh. Then the oh. second time I met Darren. I'm happy about that. We were at the Boat Show Comedy Club. It was my first time there in London. Amazing club, right? Great club. Ba I'm backstage with my then girlfriend. Oh, okay. <laughs> this was who, good. <laughs> who later on went... Later on, went on to cheat on me multiple times, but anyway. But hold on, can we talk that we were friends at this point? No, no, we weren't. We weren't? We weren't friends, because this was the second time I met him. This is a shameful thing that you did. Second... <laughs> I thought we were friends then. No, no, this is, okay. This is pretty funny, this... I like this. Second time. <laughs> second I, time. I still think this is funny. This is the second time I met him, remember the first time I met him, he just punched a table, right? I didn't... Second you're time making me him. sound like I should be in jail. I, so, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or watching a clip, so I'm sat where I'm sat, right? This table is where my girlfriend is, right? At the time. Darren sat to my left. Darren 
reaches <laughs> over on, me. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, what year was this? This was about the. It was about 2017, the se- I think. 2017. Okay, so this was a good five years ago. Yeah. Ish. Okay, carry on. Right. So Darren <laughs> reaches over me to talk to my girlfriend and says, Why are you dating him? You should be dating headliners. <laughs> You know what makes me laugh? Because it's so douchey. Because, <laughs> because I wasn't even a headliner then. <laughs> and it's just so funny to me because we actually know, like, being a headliner means absolutely nothing. nothing. Yeah. It's the difference between getting and paying an extra 20 quid. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally leaned over to your girlfriend and just went, hey, you should date a guy who earns 20, 20 quid, quid more. this guy. What right? are you doing with him? Yay! And then after that, next <sighs> time I met Darren, Fucking hell. Edinburgh Fringe Festival, Loft <sighs> Bar, I had a bit of drink, walked up to him and I said, you know, I think you're a prick because this is what you did. And then his response was, I thought we were boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I thought we were friends. <laughs> I'm like, so, what? No. I and thought, then after that, we became friends. Yeah, I thought we were boys. when I, 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 If I didn't know you, there's no way I would have went over to you. I don't believe you. Your it. girl. I'm not going to go to a, stranger's, a strange comics that, Darren, girl. Darren is notorious for making a terrible first impression. Yeah, I make bad first yeah. impressions. Yeah. Alice, Alice, our producer, she's nodding. Especially back when Alice, back when I knew Alice, though. Yeah, Alice, uh, I, what oh, year are we talking? Producer, by the way, Alice and Owen. Say hello to the mic. Oh, you've been so, with I think about 2013. 20, oh my gosh, 2030, about a decade ago, I'm in my what, early wow, 20s? Wow, my mum was alive then. Maybe, your mum was alive? Yeah. Yeah, oh, we're going to do that already? No, no, no we're not. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go to that, yeah? <laughs> go, Stick go. a pin in it, you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, when, uh, yeah, I remember Alice, like 2013, oh yeah, I think, I think back then, we were all just angry, sad You had comics. more attitude than success. Were you in Birmingham? Yeah. That's okay. perfect. More attitude than success. I remember... What? Is this when you look like a fat Chris Rock? Um, yeah. yeah. You, in, inter- around that time. Inter- okay. inter- <laughs> intermittently the fat Chris Rock look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a brutal start. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell me what I mean. This is a brutal... I, I've got... I, my not going to compare to that. You've literally just gone... I met him three times, thought he was a complete dickhead. And, I, and, then, and you made it sound as if I was like, oh, we're boys. We were hanging out all the time. <laughs> no, we're boys. And then actually we became boys after We, that. we, we... I was... I've always been your best friend in Edinburgh, in particular, because like your birthdays. We've yeah. always been there for your birth... I remember his birthdays with your ex as well. I remember we had that cake. The... Which... which, which the one, I've the had se- a few, because I... I, I, I check. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which ex are you talking about? Just put that in a trailer. <laughs> uh, the one, the same one that I came over and was like, oh, "You should, yeah, 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 you yeah, should yeah, date yeah, a headliner." Yeah. Which is just so that is a hilarious <laughs> quote, dude. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, it, like it's very rare. It's very rare. There's things that I'm legitimately, legitimately embarrassed about. <laughs> that is so embarrassing. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why I thought that would be. I, I, I mean, it was funny at the time. <laughs> yeah. But you could tell that I was trying to be a headliner. So in my head, that meant everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas now, you're a headliner purely based on like what time yeah. your tube gets in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, means, it means nothing in the grand scale of things. And also, if I get booked to headline a show, I'm like, oh. Oh, oh my God. Uh, yeah. If somebody I could have bo- got home. If somebody books me to close a show, I'm like, ugh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have to leave out at eight. It's- I know, it's such a weird time to go on stage. You're like, oh, it just ruins my evening plans. So, yeah. <laughs> actually, opening is the best. You, you get in, you do a 10 past eight stage time, done by half eight, out with your mates, get pissed. Well, if you're doing like a half nine, you can't really yeah. do yeah. yeah, yeah. Even even in like London, where all the gigs are, you know, they're no more than what like forty minutes yeah. away from my home. Yeah, it's still super annoying. Yeah, it's long. <laughs> when it's like, oh my, I have to give my, I have to give my Saturday hour up because for some reason we look at like that half nine till eleven as being like a peak for a Saturday. Where are we going to end up? Are we yeah, going to see yeah, a friend, yeah. see a girlfriend, whatever? So the idea of just being in a club. And then the MC does too much before they bring you on. Yeah. And you're just like, just bring me on. They're just tired. Come straight on. But that half nine to 11, that is the window of like, is this going to be a shameful evening or not? Yeah. Yeah. Because like you'll do the gig and I always give it like five to seven minutes after the gig. Yeah. To know whether or which side this evening is going to end on. And invariably, I'm getting fucked up. 
There's nothing worse than just bombing on your headline spot. Not I, be- I, don't, I don't know what that feels like. No, <laughs> not because, not because like bombing is worse. Like I don't care about bombing anymore. It's just like, ugh, I left my house at this time to die. I don't think you ever cared about bombing, Darren. <laughs> this is this is not working in my favour. <laughs> Can these chairs like not recline? I need to. I need. I need to stand up straight because I'm taking a real fucking beating. Okay. This is episode one, dude. This is in the Sorry, archives. Man. This is in the archives forever. It's this just forever. It's just okay. me being a. Di- I, I, I'm looking at that that line of um. You should date a headliner like almost like a guy who's trying to chat somebody up by like I don't know chat, trying to chat up like a girl by talking about like MySpace or something. It just feels so out of date. You know, I've got uh, my my uh, my, <clears throat> my car's. Uh, a Persia Electric. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, we've got a. Um, I've actually got broadband. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually. Ten, so ten gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a bit of <laughs> fiber. Have you ever used the line, do you know who I am? That's no, gorgeous. that's a rough. I wouldn't even use that. If 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 I was if it was my tour show and my picture was right next to the guy, I would still be like, "My name's Darren Harriet. Um, just I don't know. I'm supposed to be here. I wouldn't even go that me. Yeah, no. I have used the, I am who you think I am. And they and they said, oh, they dickhead. think I'm Ramesh. Oh. So then I'll be like, yeah, 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 sure. Let, let's go. I'll, I'll get. I'll, I'll get. I'll no get offense, but Ramesh must be gutted. <laughs> <laughs> Ramesh must be like I gotta work out or something dude this is, this is fucking horrendous hey hey Rom Ro- I'm receiving Rom what is this are you calling Ram yeah of course I do are you, have you ever met Ramesh yeah. you and Ramesh in the same room yeah multiple times I texted him just today actually what'd you say we were talking about my uh, new project that I'm working with him oh okay look at you doing alright ah uh, is that the only Asian guy you ever get mixed up for by sort of lazy white people I guess uh, Asians do it all the time. Really? Every Asian gig. Really? Someone will come up to me like, like you know, I thought you were that Romish fella. <laughs> bro, bro, your eye not wonky, you know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> did you actually get it? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you turn into Apu? <laughs> the next five minutes you have to speak in that accent. You lured me into a full sense of security. <laughs> And I felt like I could do it. That was a, I thought, uh, uh, I'll take a poo. <laughs> a poo, at least a poo is supposed to be brown. Because I was like, oh no, have I gone Russian? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, my eye? <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. Right, now it's your turn to do an introduction to me. I met you at that gig. I felt like, so I met you at that gig in 2015. I felt like you did well. You had a fun gig. Oh no, one. I did really well. Um, I remember, oh, there was another actor who got really annoyed at me at that gig, actually. I won't say their name, but, um, but I didn't mean to annoy them. So, so they, terrible first impression. That terrible first impression. Yeah, you've you literally just reminded me. They literally came off stage at that gig yeah. on Indie X. And um, there was like, you know, usual, oh, you did really well or whatever. And then I said, oh, yeah, they're really polite. They're like... But I didn't. The audience. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't say that in a way like, oh, the only reason they gave you laughs was because they were being really. I was just saying that because I remember they were very up for it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, And I always say that because that's my way of saying like, because if I go, oh yeah, smashed it, killed it, you'd never work again. You'd never, you know, you never try and write jokes or anything. So I just went, oh yeah, I think they're really polite. And I remember that act took that for years and just hated me. Are they still working? I, I think so, yeah. I'll tell you the act. And then we had, uh, and then I actually brought it up to them about it. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I thought you were legitimately saying that. But this was like five years later. They honestly thought that I... See, Darren does stuff which just sticks with you for ages. And I mean, I still remember what you said to me when I finished... Doing open mic. So this was a... This what was did a you say? And that was years ago. This was a joke. It made me... To be fair, it made me laugh. But I finished. I wasn't very good. That's why I don't do it anymore. Yeah. And, but um, she was new. I'd done quite well. Like, it How was a nice How were you compared to him? Oh, like... Oh, no, I was... A couple of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Years, that was like five years. And um, I'd done all right for me. And yeah. I came off and Darren said, I thought you did really well because you kept going even when they stopped laughing. Oh, Which my. had been about one ten second spot in the ten minutes. It was. It was definitely there was definitely a joke in there, but I really meant it because you didn't stop. <laughs> See, this is what I mean. I mean, I mean well, but that <laughs> sounds like a right dick. <laughs> But to me, I'm like, oh yeah, you didn't. You just carried on, even though they weren't laughing, which is what you gotta do in comedy. This is why I don't give people advice or anything. Cause I just, I just sound like the worst person ever. 
Literally, I. T- if, if you're a comedian, you DM Darren. You will get terrible advice. Uh, to be uh, fair, much kinder than stuff you said to many other people. So. Oh yeah, somebody. Oh yeah. So we, me and my little clique, yeah. like you know, like Masai, Freddie, and all them, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Jay, we were just so we were just like, because obviously there was the Manchester lot. Yeah. Who, you know, we were always jealous of the Manchester lot because Manchester had a great scene, you yeah. know, especially back then. I had no idea what it's like now. Right. But back then it was really good. And then London, even we didn't know anything about the London scene. So to us, like, I'm, I'll give you an example of how much I didn't know about the London scene. The only London gigs I had ever done between, I would say, when I first did my first ever gig in like December 06 or whatever it was, all the way up to 20... 13 was um i did downstairs at the king's head yeah one time yeah yeah crown chill and lion's den was it lion's den oh my god i did there's still a picture of me paid to play i paid i paid the four pound or whatever it was and i remember we would all just go oh londoner all those london we used to call it london lazy where all the london acts would just stay in london yeah and they would never leave london yeah yeah yeah. and they would only ever talk about the tube and all that and we were all just like oh this tube and then now since i've lived in london i am not leaving london (laughs) yeah i am like i get it no interest yeah it's so nice dude pay to play for like for those of you who like are uninitiated to the world of comedy but there were loads of open mic gigs where you had to turn up and like give, there was one gig called We Are Funny where you paid five pounds and they promised you a video, but the video was shot on like the kind of camcorder that you would see on like an amateur porn, like yeah. amateur porn shot in Kazakhstan, basically. It's like a really old <laughs> camcorder and you pay five pounds for that and often the sound wouldn't work, but you pay five pounds to perform and then others like Lion's Den, you had to put like two, three quid to get onto a list. Yes, yeah, you... yeah, yeah, I remember that. I met, a, yeah, I met a lot of acts down there. Was, there. there was another gig, uh, uh, what was it, at, at the Cavendish Arms, the name has now escaped me, where the, you wouldn't even get a running order. The MC would just call out your name. While we're talking about these sort of matters, so you had your pay to play. Yeah. London, I'm telling you, London, the way, the, the reason why we were so harsh on like London comedians and the London scene so much, especially the open mics when we were all open mics, was because there's like, you've got, obviously you've got pay to play. Yeah. You've got um, uh, 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 BYOB. A be your own bringer. B- you, you got bringer gigs where you have to bring people. Bring someone with so you. the only way you can get a spot is if you bring someone. That's, that's not just for audience. People think, oh, they only do that for audience. It's because they want you to buy a drink. A, and B, a lot of comedians would u- basically use Tinder for that. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> every, every female comedian yeah. has brought a guy yeah. to a bringer gig. I've yeah. never done that. Every female comedian has because yeah. the guy is so stupid. Yeah. They're, the guy will turn up. They, 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 they won't have sex, nothing. They will turn up on time, <laughs> ready to go. Every female comic, any female comic who's watching this now can go, I've done that. I brought a guy yeah, to a yeah. bringer. Then you had stay at gigs, uh, which are the, which are uh, stay at gigs, in case you don't know, is when you have, not only do you have to come to the gig and do your five minutes, or whatever, you then have to stay. Right to the, the end. The entire gig. You can't leave. You can't do your spot and yeah. leave. No. And the promoter's like, no, you, you're supposed to stay. And then I found out uh, recently, there's a new one called BYOB. Be your own yeah. bringer. So how that works is, if you can't, get a Tinder date or a friend to come to your gig, what you'd have to do is you would have to come to the, the show before your show. So say you're performing next week. You would turn up this week and just watch as a bringer for yourself. And then next week, you don't have to bring anyone, anyone. because you came the week before. And so you've done your bring. <laughs> I mean, the amount of time you, as a comedian, you have to invest doing shit like this. Because a lot of people will see, like, especially see you on TV, maybe see me, me a bit on TV. Or like, Ramesh. Oh, this looks great. What? Or Ramesh. Or, yeah, or, or, or Ramesh. Or Dane. Or Dane. <laughs> or Marlon. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Let's keep them going. Keep yeah. them going. Yeah, Nathan Cahan. Yeah. 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 Stephen K. Amos. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Masai said Ginny Asheray. Which, Fucking hell. Yeah. No, no. I'll be honest. That stings. <laughs> that's, that's, that stings. Yeah. Um, we, fuck me. Like, we have really paid our dues. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Properly. Anytime I meet a comedian who's like, I'm not, I'm just, I'm just here. Like, I'm, I'm like, I'm not leaving yeah. or whatever. I'm like, good for you. Yeah. Especially if I knew I'm backing it. Cause we've done, we've done it all, man. Yeah. And so this is why these fucking Instagram comedians, right? TikTok comedians, right? Stop calling yourself comedians. 
Okay? You're Instagram TikTokers. It's not the same thing as being a comedian. It's not being a comedian in your bio. Have you ever done a corporate in Stoke on a Tuesday? Hmm? Uh, have you? Have you? Have you, been, you? have you been booed on stage hmm? and, and they refused to pay you? Have you yeah. had that? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, it must be really lovely just playing to your fans all the time. Have you played to people who don't give a fuck about you? They hate you. How many times have you ever done a gig hmm, during the summer and uh, uh, half the audience are wearing cock hats? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. How many times mm -hmm. have you done a gig at the Henley Festival where the headliner has to go on before you because the headliner has to fly to Los Angeles and that headliner's name is Russell Kane. He gets a standing ovation and then you have to go on after Russell fucking Kane, <sighs> half the tent are fucking leaving and then one guy in the corner says, this is a good effort, mate. Hey. <laughs> How many of you? <laughs> That's, that's oh. a horrible situation to be in. You've got to follow Russell Kane, who's supposed to headline. And, then, got a standing ovation. and got a standing ovation. And then you go on there and go, hi guys, if it helps, just pretend I'm Romish. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey. One uh, guy shouted out, this is a good effort, mate. And what did the rest of the crowd, what, what was the reaction? A couple of people clapped. Oof. You know when they're like three people clap, but not at the same time? Oof. There's something quite hurtful about it. Because it's not in rhythm. And it seems like they were all deciding at different times. Mm. Oh, oh well, he's a yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Just, Does he, shall, shall we? That's brutal. That's the worst kind of clap. But there is. We, it sounds like you know, like you know when you know when your balls slap, <laughs> but in a really non-committal way. Yeah, I, I don't really hear that. On my Do balls, you not? To be honest. Oh yeah, that's true. Because oh my god, when when Darren is having sex, and I'll tell you why I know this is because I lived with the guy in Edinburgh. It was like a pneumatic drill every fucking night, and I'm hearing impaired. So let that, let that, I wear a hearing aid and all I could hear from the room across the hallway was <laughs> and fair play to the guy, goes on for a long time, fair play to him, but every night, <laughs> every <laughs> night, <laughs> what can I say, I put a shift in. <laughs> You, do, you really did put a shift in fucking... You haven't finished your introduction to me, by the way. My introduction to you? I always thought you was a nice... I always thought you was a nice guy. A bit of a weirdo. Oh, I always... My thing with you Why? was... I always found you... always found you too emotional. I always felt like I wanted to, like, whip you back and tell you to fucking man up. <laughs> but when? when? Like, Edinburgh, Edinburgh, you've cried a lot at yeah, Edinburgh. Yeah, Edinburgh was... Edinburgh's tough, though. No, I've never cried at Edinburgh. You've you, cried You've never lot. cried, full stop. Yeah, I don't even know what tears are. <laughs> I don't, I don't even know what they are. Yeah. <laughs> they don't exist in my world. I'm always like, Ishan, just don't worry about it, man. No, no, but, okay, but the reason I'm crying... <laughs> Ishan's the only guy who cries holding a beer. <laughs> it's the saddest... <laughs> I'm like, come on, man! Okay, there was a period of my life where I was very emotional. But to be fair, that Edinburgh, though... Yeah. It was because I'd been cheated on. It happens. Yeah, yeah, okay, fine. That's true. Was that... Oh, oh, that was the same girl? Yeah. I like how she's come up like three times know, already. Had, so that... that And emotion, it was tough. And I was missing my mum. Yeah, yeah, okay. There was a period where... I remember I used to drink a lot. And every time I drank, I would think of my mum. Why? Did you used to drink a lot with your mum? No, no. I just... My brain would just... This Guinness is for you, dear. No, now, now I don't. Do you want to talk about your mum? No, she's dead. That's it. <laughs> Fucking hell. What an obituary. What do you want me to say? What a fucking obituary. <laughs> imagine if that was... Imagine if that was a... She's dead. A she's dead, isn't it? <laughs> da, da. Oh, that's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> and I go to the incinerator. Here comes the body. Oh, wow. I've got wedding on the brain. Uh, so your, your mum passed away before you started comedy, right? Your mum's... Two a, months after I started. Yeah, that's so. You did you have any idea you wanted to do comedy before then? No. So your mom, should I find that so interesting? So your mom died, and then like, how did you get? How how two months later did you then? Were you on a stage? No, no, it was two months before. Two months before she died. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, my bad. Yeah. So, so you, I I started in March twenty fourteen. And your mum was like, I can't deal with this embarrassment. Yeah, and then just fucking had a heart attack and died. She, she saw your first set and she, she was, was just like, like, this guy shit. Holy bro. fuck. And now I'm going to have to give him advice saying, no, no, they were just a tough crowd. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. The MC did a lot before you. <laughs> yeah. Russell, Russell Kane destroyed. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. It's hard to go on after a musical comedian. <laughs> 
Did you feel like you couldn't do comedy anymore after that? Because obviously, you know, that's the saddest thing that's ever happened to you. And then you're doing comedy. I did my first gig two weeks after my mum died. Like after she died. My first yeah. gig was two weeks after she died. Because I didn't know what else to do. So, I'm confused here. I thought you said you did your first gig two months before your mum died. My first gig was two months before my mum died. Yes. March 2014. Yeah. May 2014, mum dies. Yeah. Two weeks after she dies, I do a gig. Oh, okay. So that was your, like, your second gig, whatever. Yeah. Or okay. And how did that go? Pretty good. It was in the same venue that my mum saw me do comedy. So your mum, so you, before your mum knew she, wanted, she knew you wanted to be a comedian? I didn't even want to be a comedian, comedian then. I just wanted to just do it as a hobby. And then you got that comedy bug. And I got the and, comedy bug. And now look at you, Ishan. I know. You're trapped in the I world of the, lady the, comedy. Do you know what? What happened was, is I did comedy and it's like, you know, do you know this? Do you know Shane? Do you know who Shane Warne is? No, who? Shane Warne. Shane, I know Shane Ward. Do you know Shane Warne? No. Shane Warne is. Wasn't Shane Ward the guy who won Pop Idol or X Factor? <laughs> yeah. That's is that my. Who he is? That's my goal. Ward, yeah. yeah, it was in the Coronation Street as well. Says a lot about the difference in me and you. <laughs> I've, n- I've never heard of he Shane Warne. If I'm correct, his song was That's My Goal. What else? That's all I know. He was in Corrie as well, I think. Was he? Yeah. Sorry, uh, who was Shane Warne? Shane. Oh, Shane Warne, the cricketer. Yes. Oh, didn't he die recently? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a really uplifting. Oh, uplifting, yeah. Okay, now. <laughs> the now dead. Yeah. <laughs> Australian cricketer. Basically, he wanted to play Aussie rules football. Yeah. Got a knee injury. Was out of sport for like two years. Got depressed. Then his mates said, "Why don't you come to the cricket nets?" He bowled for the first time. Turns out he was an unbelievable leg spinner. And then he was like, okay, maybe cricket's my calling. And then he became the best leg spinner in the history of Yeah, he's sport. massive. It's a bit like me with comedy. Okay, d- d- I, d- give me your, yeah. So I just did a hobby. Mum died, got depressed, okay. did a gig. Okay. Fucking sick at comedy. Yeah. I'm like okay. so good at it. Yeah, it's like a shit Batman. <laughs> Parent passed away. Yeah. And look at him now. What, the Joker? Fighting the, yeah, you, yeah the Joker, yeah. yeah. The, easily the unfunniest person in all of, <laughs> in all of Batman. Shame is delicious. I, I don't really die very often, you know. We don't die anymore. We've been doing it too long. No, 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 no. We, we, we'll still die, but we don't die often. I, I don't think, I think I can count on one hand how many times I've died. Really? Yeah. I mean, Alice has seen me dying out my ass a lot back in the day. You, yeah, 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 but you've been doing, this is the thing about, this is the thing about Ishan. He's always put, very nice about it, though. Oh, it's fair, fair. <laughs> uh, even now, as much as I love you, if I see you die on your ass, it would make my absolute Christmas to see you. Uh, it's very rare that I die, though. Eat, I love watching comics eat Yeah, I shit. love watching comics die as Cause well. Because we all, is it, I, I can see you kill, you can see me kill. I want to see you struggle. I want to see you do something where, I want to see you struggle so bad. Where you see one sweat. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. You, you know when you can see the sweat and you go, you go. <laughs> you know when you, you can hear the gulp in the throat? <laughs> I love it. You know what I love? I love it when, because there's certain comics and I think you are more like this than me where, and it's not a bad thing necessarily, where if you're having a tough gig, you'll try spin plates. So you'll be like, okay, let me try. Maybe if I do a bit of uh, audience stuff, maybe if I do, maybe if I do a bit of dancing, maybe if I get them to cheer and do all that sort of stuff, I'm less likely to spin plates because in my head, I just go, I hate them. <laughs> I hate them so much. They're just gonna have to deal with whatever it's really? here. I have a go at them. Yeah, but I yeah, but even that in like a fun way, yeah. I feel like you're much more just up for. It's the reason why you do really well at corporates, and I've been booed at a few. Well, I've been booed at one, but I deserve, definitely deserve that. You, okay. Yeah, I've, I was just a dick to everybody there, and I was just like, what? that's the thing with corporates, and you're better at this than me because you do. I think you do more. Yeah. You have to sell yourself to the corporate, and you're like, you're literally like, I am an employee of you. Yeah. I, I, you know, you want me to do how much? You don't want me to swear? You want me to mention this? I will do all of those things. Basically, what he's just done there is tell me it's like an obedient former colonial. Yeah. Just listen to instructions from the white man. Yeah. Where he's like, I don't do that. Yeah. I'm like, my name, my, I, I'm, I've literally got my African name back. <laughs> <laughs> do you have... <laughs> Do you, do, you, do you have any? I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming so. Because I've, I've, all like people from. I would from, love to know what your African name is. My African name would I be. Would love well, I'll give you, I'll tell you this. My auntie did her um, DNA test thing, yeah. which is just quite funny. Yeah. And uh, it turned out she's 55% Nigerian, 
Oh. And it's completely changed the whole, my whole family. Like my auntie's like, we just got to accept that we're African. Yeah. <laughs> and my family are like, we are from Jamaica. Yeah. And, and obviously a lot other, of- Other parts of your family was like, we were so racist to uh, these uh, days. Oh, like, oh my, oh, I can't believe we said all of that. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, yeah, so um, I'm definitely, if I did it, I would definitely be half, probably more than half Nigerian. This is an episode of Who Do You Think You Are waiting to happen. I can't wait. I really want to do that show. Do you? Yeah, because on I my know. dad's side, they're um, like Rastafari with like a Jewish surname. So I'm really interested okay. to see about their history. But you know, Ainsley Harriet, he did his Who Do You Think You Are? And obviously my whole family was very tuned in because I'm definitely related to him. Yeah. And it turns out his great, 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 great grandfather, whatever, was a white guy from Scotland called Ebenezer Harriet. Good guy. Ebenezer Harriet. Ebenezer Harriet. That. Good guy. Slave owner, but you know, everybody, yeah, 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 everybody yeah. has their faults. Yeah. And he went over to Jamaica, a place called Mandeville, which is like the Manchester in Jamaica, and he owned a lot of slaves over there and then obviously got them impregnated, gave them their names. Yeah. And this is where the Harriets come from. Oh. That's why it's got the spelt Scottish. Do you, do you feel any shame for coming from a slave owning stock? I mean, where do you think you came from? You probably, you probably had some slave owning stock. We Most people have slave owning stock. We didn't. We didn't have slaves. We had house housemaids. That's, <laughs> we didn't. We didn't have slaves. We just had people who would work for us. We didn't give them any money. No, no, we gave them money. We gave them money, education, a house, a kitchen. Wasn't you, so? You've got no. You were. Yeah, but you were. Oh, <laughs> a kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Workspace. We gave. Yeah. Them, <laughs> Yeah. We, we gave them a workspace. They also, a little sewing machine. They also slept in that workspace. Yeah, they did. Literally. So you have no like. It was own... like a studio flat at the back of the house. You guys had loads of colonialism. You're from slave stock as well. You know, but we didn't own any. We didn't own any. Oh, oh, my, oh, was in my oh, yeah. was in Evan. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, you might have me there. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I mean. Yeah. I don't think we owned any. Uh, my grandfather was knighted for services to the empire. Well, not my grand, my great, <laughs> great, great grandfather. Was that's, knighted, n that's a knighthood you do not want. Was knighted for services to the empire. Nowadays, you get a knighthood for like winning four Olympic medals. <laughs> he was like, I was very good at buying and owning slaves. Now, nowadays, you get knighthood for running a community centre for twenty years. Like, it doesn't matter, right? But just, like four generations ago, and on the thing, it was for social work. But actually, he was a spy. Wow. So he was like dobbing in like Indians who weren't paying their taxes to the British Empire. <laughs> You've got like weird, you've got like weird family history. Like I know your, your dad, I'm obsessed with your dad's story about being, what was he like an enforcer or yeah, something? Yeah, so like yeah, yeah. He, 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 Ishan's dad would go into, was it like Jewish neighborhoods? Not Jewish neighborhoods. I don't know if I suddenly turn into an anti-Semitic podcast. Was it your dad? In like... No, 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 no. So my dad's nickname yeah. was Don. Don, that's that's and always the good. The reason he was called Don is because where he lived, he, he had a cricket team in Upton Park in the East End. Yeah, and him and his cricket team were the front line of defence against the National Front across like five streets in Upton Park. Yeah, what year are we talking? We around? are talking nineteen seventy-seven to about eighty-one. Okay, that's a, that's fun. Yeah, and so people would call him and say, "Oh, this guy's like come and beating my kid up." Uh -uh. My dad would get his boys, get in cricket bats, and beat the shit out of these people. <laughs> and then the would he get money for it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and then, that. And then so on the on Upton Lane there was a mini cab office, a pawn shop, as in like pornography, Porn as opposed to like. Oh, okay, great. Uh, the a bakery one. and a cafe, and my dad and his, but mainly my dad, but the rest of the cricket team, that was their patch. So that was the part of the road that you didn't go to if you weren't if you were national front yeah because my dad would find you and beat the shit out of you basically i thought your dad so your dad was literally like an enforcer for a whole block for a whole block and then when there were the south hall riots i think yeah. in 81 people called my dad up and said like we heard that you you you, you know what you're doing with this stuff and he was like yeah yeah i'll fucking go to south hall and take this cricket team and beat the shit out of it sounds like your dad just was missing the sort of football matches in between. Of it, it was his, just the cricket matches. Yeah, did. yeah, just this hooliganism. Yeah. I never think of foot cricketers as being hooligans. But then, I mean, if you think about it, because back then you had like the Asians and the whites yeah. playing each other. Yeah. There was one time where um, he told me this story that they went to play this cricket match and this team, they saw my dad's team and refused to play. Yeah. So my dad actually had to change the name of his team to Capricorn. Why? Because people wouldn't play... Like the Azar, the 11. Oh, okay, yeah. So he changed the name to Capricorn. And then when they turned up, this team refused to play. Um, because they were... Because they're all Asian. 
It's hilarious. Um, and then apparently, what because it was near a farm, what they did is is they got um, like a bucket of manure shit basically uh. and just put it in the dressing room, just threw it into the dressing room that my dad was in um, with all the team. So they were like, okay, it's not a problem. You said you threw it. Thought, <laughs> Sorry, I'm just imagining your dad walked in there and went. <laughs> <laughs> not a problem. Not a problem. Okay, that's just fine. Just so cool. Uh, so he said, so they found the t- other team. Yeah. Got every single one of them, threw them into the dressing room, locked it, and got more shit from the farm and threw it through the windows. <laughs> How many did your dad have? Like there was a there was the eleven and there was a fifteen squad of fifteen. That's a lot of people. Ocean's fifteen. Did he ever get arrested? No. I like that. And look at your dad now. He's like such a such a good man. Such a nice. Such he's, a, pa- he's a paramedic. He's a paramedic. He's a fly. I like I like how your dad decided to be a paramedic after he broke a couple of noses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was like, you know, what? I could probably help with that. <laughs> but it's such a weird thing, right? Because like he was like that. Could you imagine me doing shit like that? I can't imagine you do. No. Like. I, I do a joke about You could this. be an accountant for a gang. <laughs> <laughs> but like, guys, listen, I know you're into robbing, but taxes are important. Taxes are very important. Trust hey, me. Hey, have you declared that night? <laughs> <laughs> it's very important. I do a joke about how, like, um, I once witnessed my dad beat up this guy who threatened to rape my mum because my dad hadn't given way on this very narrow road. So my dad walked out pulled him out of his car and smacked his head on the bonnet like four times. This guy's face just bloodied everywhere. And I was like, yeah, that's my dad. And then the first time I got called the P word, I wrote an article for The Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> so pathetic. That is great. How old were you when your dad beat this guy up? Uh, six. And what did you think? Seven. I was scared at first, but then afterwards I was like, oh, <gasps> Like my dad's a fucking superhero, you know. He, he, he dishonored his wife. I would have loved. I would have loved to have seen worst, that. The funniest worry. bit about that is when we got home, my mum was so pissed off with my dad. Really? Yeah. Why? They had a massive argument. Why? My dad stormed out the house. He didn't come back for two days. <laughs> that's hilarious. Because you're like, that's a bad example. You're saying to Ishan, well, he's going to get violent, and then they both looked at me like this fat sc- <laughs> <laughs> little <laughs> accountant kid. It's going to go, well, I will beat you up if you I'm say just, this. I'm just imagining you were holding a calculator even then. <laughs> just like, oh, 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 boobs. boobs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where, where are you going to be? Where can the people come and see? Because at the end of the day, we're stand-up comedians. The whole point of this is people to come see And it is tomorrow. at the end of the day, because that's the kind of time we perform. I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah, look yeah. at that. Yeah. Genius. Uh, I am going to Edinburgh. Ooh. For 12 days, 16th to the 28th, to work up a new show, which I'm going to take on tour next year. So you keep locked into the pod because I'm going to give you loads of cool details about that. And Website, things. socials. <laughs> Ishanakbar.com, socials, Michael Packintyre, which I've been told I have to change. By who? Like my agent. Yeah, yeah, probably. That makes sense. Cause, no, because. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've told you this before. No, but Michael Packintyre. You're acting like this is new. We've we've had discussions. Yeah, but it's Michael so Packenter. I, I mean, I mean, it's uh, I mean, it's very very low returns on Michael Packenter now. Really? I think I, I would say so. Really? Why? Yeah. <coughs> you think it's run its course? I think it's run its course. I will change. It ran its course after day one. I, no, it didn't. I will change Michael Packenter if you change yours to Rob Blackett. I'm um, no way. Do you? What are you, Rob Blackett? That's not funny at it is all. Funny. You said it. Out I was of, laughing. You said it. Out of, that's not funny. No, Owen, I was laughing, Owen, No, I was just being polite. It's no, just, no. It's the first. Ep- <laughs> You're doing it again. It's, <laughs> it's the first episode. It's just being polite. No, no. It's just being he nice knows to it's you. It's funny. Rob Blackett is not funny. Is yeah. Funny. Oh. I've actually had my teeth shaved down <laughs> as well. That's. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I know you're doing a good. Team. I've, had a, I've actually had a shave. <laughs> I did. Yeah. What Rob, do they shave it with? The, the Black and Decker. You, you, uh, <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Sorry, I just realised what I said, Black and Decker. Yeah, yeah, I know, uh, yeah. I this didn't realise. Oh, that very... is, I'm funny. That's, <laughs> that's, that's debatable. Uh, you can find us on all the usual social medias. You can find me at Darren Harriet on all social, it's Darren Harriet, it's felt like Ainsley Harriet, but uh, like Darren Harriet. Shame is delicious on Instagram. Yes. Uh, Twitter. Not Twitter. Uh, shame is shame, shame delicious. delicious on t- shame delicious on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, YouTube shame is delicious. Yeah. TikTok. 
Oh, we've Appar- got a TikTok. We've Come got, on. We've got a TikTok. It's not run by me. Yeah, it's not run <laughs> by me either. I don't fucking know how to work that. Uh, get us on TikTok. We'll be posting, yeah, regular clips, videos from the show. Uh, we're, we're, we're new. We're, start, we're starting yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, All we need is your support and a couple of shares, man. That's what we need. And then we'll work it out. We'll get better and better and better. No, yeah. Better. You can just find me on all your social media. Uh, there's plenty of TV things coming up. Um, uh, I've done so much filming over the past few months. Just look out for us. But obviously, we're going to keep updating you. This is going to be a weekly podcast. Yeah. Weekly with loads of clips. Whoop, 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 whoop. Why are you just shaking your head like that? No, I'm just listening. Oh, okay. I thought you was, no, I'm being encouraging. Oh, oh, is that you being encouraging? Yeah. Good job, you're not a dad. Um, you <laughs> Shame is delicious. That is the podcast. Ishan. See you soon. That's a terrible ending. We'll get better at this. Shame is delicious. Shame is delicious. Making bad decisions. Shame is delicious. Making bad decisions. Shame is delicious. Making bad decisions. Shame is delicious. Making bad decisions